Well, good evening, everybody. Come on, okay. Is everybody worn out already? Can we give it up for Jesus? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Can we give it up for Jesus this side? Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, what about that side? Okay, hold up, hold up. You guys getting ready? You guys ready? Give it up for Jesus! I was taking a little advantage right now. The stage in Pomona is like a quarter of it. And a lot of times I feel like a caged lion. I, I'm like just going back and forth. I feel like I'm already right there. Today I'm going to be running laps, you guys. Welcome to Wednesday Night Revival. I'm telling you, this is the most fired up spot, I'm gonna say in Southern California on a Wednesday night. There, I ain't seen nothing happening like what I see happening here on Wednesday evenings. <sighs> All right, I kind of lost my voice. But I wanna pray real quick. And I wanna pray that the Holy Spirit takes over. This is not about me being here. This is not about, the, about Pomona Campus being here. This, what this is about today is coming in unity together and receiving from God. Allowing the Holy Spirit to move tonight. Maybe he's igniting some, maybe somebody is getting ignited tonight. Maybe they haven't had a worship on their lips in a while. But tonight, after you leave this place, you will have to give thanks to God. Tonight. Tonight, Pastor Robert said there's going to be generational curses. It's already, been, it's already taken place. There's generational curses that are being broken today. Off of your shout, off of your praise, and off of your worship. So I'm going to say tonight, take off the seatbelt and roll with it, guys. Today, tonight's not a night to be safe. Tonight's not a night to be comfortable and sit in your seat and give a silent hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, we're going to jump. We're going to shout. We're going to give God praise tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to get to it before I run out of time. We don't even have a... So Pastor Marco said, Pastor Marco said that revival is supposed to be loud. Right? It's not to wake God up. It's to wake up the spirit inside of us, right? And it says, and just like Mike said, God inhabits the praises of his people. When we're giving God a shout of praise, when we're singing unto the Lord, he is here. He is with us. I love what Mike came up here and he said, he's all, if he was to walk into this room right now, what would you do? I don't know, man. I'd probably just fall on my face. <laughs> He's all, well, then why didn't you? Jesus is in this place. Jesus is in this place. There is healing that will take place tonight. There's deliverance that will take place tonight. Just from a word, just from something that gets spoken out of your mouth tonight, there will be healing. So revival, I just wanted to touch on this really quickly. I have another word. But I want to touch on it. Revival. The definition is the awakening or quickening of God's people to their true nature and purpose. Do you know? Who's, where's God's people at tonight? Okay, that, that was like half of you. 
That was like half of you, okay. For the other half, we're going to believe that the other half will be jumping up as well. So understand our true purpose. Does anybody know what our true purpose is? Why God created us? It's to praise and worship him. So what does it say here? It says the awakening and quickening of God's people to their true nature and purpose. It's to wake us up to praise him. It's to wake us up to praise him, family. So, Father, we just come before you today, Lord, as a church on fire for you, Lord. A church longing for your presence. Apart from you, we know that we could do nothing. So, Father, I pray that you have your way in this place. That you would take over. That right now, every heart is open to receive what you would have for them, Lord. We believe, Father, that your Holy Spirit is covering this place right now. Father, we are praying right now for miracles, signs, and wonders to take place in this place tonight. Because where your Spirit is, where your Spirit is, there is freedom. Father, we pray for strongholds are being broken right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We love you, Lord. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I told you, man, I'm going to get my workout on this stage tonight. I wish I had my watch that has a little stepper. Because, man, I know I'll get them. I have a word. And, of course, if, if it's going to fit with, uh, it's a word that I live out every day, really. But it just so happens to be that we're around Thanksgiving. So I came up with this really clever word. There it is. <laughs> Thankful. Thankful. I, I kept thinking, I was like, man, Lord, drop something on me that would express thankfulness, that would, that would get people fired up. And he said, there it is. He said, what more do you need? I said, Thankful. Now, I'm going to go over the definition of thankfulness because maybe some of us, maybe some of us don't truly understand what it is. Because when you truly understand what it is, it will give you a conviction to do something about it. Ooh, that's rubbing people, huh? Got real quiet. The definition. So what is thankfulness? For those of you note takers, how many note takers we got? All right, get your pencil burning, you guys, because I got a little bit of time to run through all these notes he downloaded into me. So thankful is to be pleased and re relieved. Expressing gratitude and relief. Expressing gratitude. See, some of us are just thankful. We just have the feeling part of it, right? We say, yeah, you know, I'm thankful. God set me free. You're off drugs. You're, maybe you're out of prison. Maybe God restored your marriage. You know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. But I'm going to tell you this. Thankfulness comes with expressing something. We could be thankful from afar. We could be thankful, oh, I don't need to go to church. You can be in this room. You could be in this atmosphere. And you could sit right in your chair and say, I ain't jumping up and down and being all crazy like them. Maybe you don't understand what some of us have been taken out of. The reason I say this is because when Pastor Robert said, hey, could you speak? I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll speak about thankfulness. I know all about being thankful. If there's one word I know, it's about being thankful. From where I came from, from where God brought me out of. Some of you know my testimony, and I'm not even going into that tonight. But I am thankful. But it said, and I, and I went into gratitude. The definition of gratitude is a quality of being thankful with a readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. So when I say, are you thankful? The definition of thankful is to be ready, is to be ready to show kindness. So when I say I'm thankful, I'm ready to go out and do whatever the Lord has me to do. It doesn't matter, midnight, one o'clock in the morning too, come on, some of us were up doing dumb stuff at that time anyways, right? But understand when you're thankful, when you're thankful, it doesn't matter. This life is not mine. 
I don't deserve to be here. I shouldn't have been here. My wife will testify to everything I say. I don't come up here and make nothing up. I shouldn't be here today. So everything that I do, every moment that I have, every breath that I take is unto the Lord. It is not mine. You're like, man, pastor, it's easy for you to say. Probably living at large and doing real good. We've gone through struggle. We've gone through it. And guess what? I'm so thankful to have gone through every single moment of those hard times. I am thankful that I'm here. There's people that were with me growing up and they didn't make it this far. I am thankful that I'm here. So thankfulness. So you are to acknowledge or you are acknowledging and giving thanks for something that someone has done for you or given to you. So I'm going to have, ask a couple of questions today. And I just want this to seep in because I really want people to understand the realness, I, I don't know a better word, the realness of being grateful, of being thankful. It comes with something. Love is an action word. I believe thankfulness turns into one. Right? So just before I came up here, I'm sitting in the back room, and I have all my notes. I'm ready to go, and the Lord drops another one. So they do not have this. Sorry, media team. But the scriptures found in Luke 7. And Jesus, at 36 through 50, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. But it talks about a woman. Jesus comes in. He's invited into a, uh, into a dinner with, with the Pharisee. And Jesus comes into the room. And this lady, she hears about Jesus coming to this Pharisee's house. She Somehow, I, I can just picture it. I don't know how she comes in, sneaks in the door, crumbs through the window. Whatever she had to do, right? She didn't know them. But she knew Jesus was there. So what scripture goes on to say is that she got behind him. She began to weep. As soon as Jesus sits, she comes, she runs up. She begins to, to clean his feet. There's no water. She's wiping his feet, cleaning his feet with, his, with her tears. She begins to wipe. She gets her hair and she begins to wipe him off. The Pharisee looks and, and the Pharisee doesn't even say nothing. The Pharisee begins to think this. Well, man, if this guy's a prophet, then he would know. He wouldn't want her touching him. She's a sinful woman. Jesus looks up and Jesus says this. He says, go ahead, teacher Simon. So he's talking to this, this uh, Pharisee, Simon, and he tells this parable. He says, then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other. But neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both. Canceling their debts, he turns and he asks him, he said, who do you think, who do you think was more thankful? The prophet told him, or the, the Pharisee told him, the one who owed more. He said, exactly. This woman's sins were great. She knew it. She came in. She was forgiven. The reason she acted the way that she acted, we, because she knew what she was forgiven of. Some of you in here today, that's why we're jumping up and down. That's why we're saying, thank you, Lord. We know what we've been forgiven of. He told the Pharisee, he told the Pharisee, he said, you see that? You see what she did? And you didn't even greet me. You didn't even greet me with a kiss, yet she hasn't stopped kissing my feet since the minute I walked in. Today, it doesn't matter how long this takes. Our worship needs to be expressed to God. How grateful are you? How thankful are you? We say, well, I'm a little out of my comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. If somebody walked up and said, I'll give you $1,000, jump up and down and act like a fool. I guarantee you we'll have 90% of this place acting crazy. Guess what? Jesus came to give you eternal life and forgive you of every single thing you've ever done. If that's not a reason to jump and shout and praise God like a crazy person, I don't know what is.
Sorry, the worship got me all fired up now, guys. So we'll jump back into it. We'll jump back into it. So, so what are you thankful today for? And it says, count your blessings. And I say count your blessings for a reason. There's going to be times. There's going to be hard times. You maybe go through a divorce Lost of a loved one. We're around the holidays. This is around a lot of times and people begin to, to miss people. It's important that we know. And there was an old song, and I'm not a, a worship leader or anything, so you don't want me to sing. But there's an old song, count your blessings one by one. Right? And I'm not going to go into it. I want to, but I'm not going to. I'm not Pastor Mark. Pastor Mark will turn that into a rap right now. But you need to understand there's a reason. When we begin to count our blessings one by one, thank you, Lord, for my car. That's a blessing. Even though it shakes and rattles and rolls right now. I, thank you, Lord. It's, it's, it's moving. Thank you, Lord, for the roof over my head. Thank you, Lord, for my wife. Thank you, Lord, for my children. Even though they're crazy right now, they're coming along. Thank you, Lord, for my grandchildren. Thank you, Lord, for my job. Thank you, Lord, for the ministry. Thank you, Lord, for the church. Thank you, Lord, for my pastors and my leaders, Lord. Start to count them. Start to count them. Start to count them. Guess what? Let's go deeper. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's one foot. Maybe you only got one foot. Thank you, Lord, for that one foot. Thank you, Lord, for my leg. Thank you, Lord, for my arm. We're going to start to count every single blessing until those other things start to fade away. Thank you, Lord, for the breath in my lungs. Thank you, Lord, for my freedom. Thank you, Lord, for my sound mind. It's important that we start to count the blessings. The most important thing I'm thankful for, though, is the cross. The cross leads to forgiveness, right? Reconciliation with God. I'm thankful for my salvation. All the rest of those things wouldn't matter if I didn't have that. And the reason I tell you this is because I had all that other stuff before. And I abused it. I neglected it. I didn't care. It came. It went. But when I got these things, I acknowledged what I had. It put everything in perspective. Thank you, Lord. I began to be grateful and thankful for every single thing that I had. Every crazy family member that's in my life. Thank you, Lord. And this scripture, this one gets me pumped up every time. And we're going to go to the message version, guys. No takers. It's Psalm 16, 9 through 10, and it says, and it reads like this. I am happy from the outside in, or from the inside out, and from the outside in. I am firmly formed. You canceled my ticket to hell. That is no longer my destination. You guys, if you knew where I was and understand... The majority, if not all of you, were on that same road. This should give us the most excitement out of anything in the world. Forget the Lamborghini. Forget the, the mansions, right? All that stuff is extra. It's peanuts compared to my salvation. My ticket to hell has been canceled. There's some of you. I know you, I know, you know it. I know you know it, right? You were there, living in hell. It's not my destination anymore. The reason I say count your blessings is because we need to stay focused on the blessings over our wants. I'm so guilty of this. In the world, I was so greedy, manipulative. I had this thing where, and God works on me with it, where if I want something, I fixated on it until I had it. It was crazy. 
give up everything. Like every other plan, goal I ever had, like just went out the window. If I saw something, I wanted it, I was going for it. What God has shown me is stop focusing on your wants. Focus on what you have. Count the blessings. Count the blessings. Oh, man, I don't, got no, I don't got no AC in my car. So you got a car. Maybe you don't got a car. You got a bike. Hey, I got a bike. Hey, I got public transportation. Whatever it may be. Thank you, Lord. I mean, like, man, I'm walking. Hey, maybe you need exercise. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying, I used to love to walk. My wife can vouch. Should I come pick you up? Now I'll walk. Yeah, it's like four miles. I know. But if not, we can easily be, become ungrateful. When we begin to focus on the, the, the wants. Oh, I want that, that car, that certain car. Man, I want that certain house. We, begin, we, can, we can become ungrateful. We stop praising God. All of a sudden, we, we make a wish list. Lord, I want that house. Lord, I want that girl. Lord, I want that, that man. Lord, I want this. I want that. He's like, dude, I'm not giving you that. You're not even grateful for what you have. Be thankful. Count our blessings, right? So why is it important to count the blessings? Count, you know, counting the blessings is giving thanks to reminds us how much we really have. Because as humans, we can tend to focus on what we don't have. In Colossians 3.2, it says, set your minds and keep focused habitually on the things above, the heavenly things, and not the things that are on this earth, which have only temporal value. We could spend our whole lives, guys, chasing things. Being ungrateful, never being satisfied. Or we can begin to count the blessings that we have and be grateful and thankful and praise God for everything he's done. So there's a quote, and here's from, uh, I, don't, I don't know, it's a really weird name, but uh, Madeline, Madeline D. Badcock. But it says, it is better to lose count while naming your blessings than to lose your blessings to counting your troubles. It is better to lose count or by naming your blessings. Man, I could just count every single blessing internally in my body and I'll lose count, right? Thank you for my liver, Lord. Thank you for my heart. Thank you for whatever that little thing over here does. I don't know what it does, but thank you for it. I know it does something, right? By the time we're done with that, like, okay, now you can start focusing on the outside. But if we begin to focus on our troubles, if we begin to focus on the things that we don't have, we're going to lose every blessing. We become ungrateful. So who are you thankful to? So who are you recognizing and showing appreciation to for all that he's given you? Have you sometimes come into a place where you're thanking yourself? I did that. I got that degree. I worked hard. I got that car. I worked hard. I pulled that girl, pulled that guy. I worked hard. I went to NA meetings and I set myself free from alcohol addiction, drug addiction. I did that. We have to recognize that there's a real God. There's a real God. And the scripture that says that every good and perfect gift comes from him. So when you talk about something good happening in your life, what, you think you did it? Think you got that job? You think you worked hard? Who do you think created you? Who do you think gave you the mind to even get through there? Who do you think gave you the energy to do what you're doing? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So we acknowledge God. I'm not going to stop there. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And the reason I say this is because each one of them has done an individual work in your life, in my life. 
God is God of creation. God created, right? And it says it in, in Genesis 2, 7. It says he formed man. Jesus, I thank Jesus for my salvation. He's the one who climbed on that cross, paid the debt that I couldn't pay, right? And it's Colossians 1.22. It says he reconciled, he, we were reconciled by his death. And three, the Holy Spirit for edification. We thank him for that. Understand the Holy Spirit is a person, despite what some people might say. In Colossians 1.22, it says reconciled, or I'm sorry, in John 14.26, our helper and teacher. He's the one speaking to you. He's that little voice that some of us never listen to, right? Or we do once in a great while. But man, I wake up and those, I, I thank all three. Lord, thank you for creating me, Lord. Thank you for the creation of everything that I see. Thank you, Jesus, for my salvation. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for not giving up on me even when I was a hardhead. Thank you, Lord. So no matter how hard we try, and I want you to understand this, all of those stubborn, hard-headed people, I was one, the, one of the biggest ones, could not have pulled that off. I couldn't have created myself. I can't boast about creating myself. You say self-made? Really? Ignorance. I know I was there. So no matter how hard you try, you cannot take credit for any of those things. I can't say, oh, man, Chris woke up with a great idea, and it was to go help a bunch of people. That was not in my vocabulary. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for dropping that in me because that ain't me. Right? I'm just making an example so you see there's some things that are not from you. They were gifts given to you. So I, I, I highlighted this. I wrote this down. I blew it up on my little thing right here. It says, so let's give credit where credit is due. You did not create yourself. You did not pay the debt, die on a cross for your salvation to be reconciled with God. And you sure did not start to, to learn these things to begin to soften your heart. That wasn't you. Let's give credit where credit is due. Let's give it up for Jesus right now, you guys. A little quiet in this place. Let's give it up for Jesus. If you've been saved, delivered, set free, let's give it up to Jesus right now. Give credit where credit is due. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The only reason we're standing here today is because of him. We need to get it right. My wife likes to say this, you better get right before you get left. So in Psalms 103, 2 through 4, it says, let all that I am praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. He forgives all of my sins and heals all of my diseases. He redeems me from death and gives a crown. And gives a crown and love and tender mercies. Thank you, Lord. So how do we show gratitude? We are not a church. As Christians, we should not be thankful without action. If we truly believe that our debt has been paid, if we truly believe that our ticket to hell has been canceled, it requires action. Just sit back and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings. I count them all one by one. There's a requirement. There's a requirement. When I first gave my life to the Lord, I, asked, I talked to my wife, and man, I'm feeling brand new, and I'm feeling, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling good. You know the feeling. And I thought, I'm like, man. I go, baby, and I said it. I go, we should just move. Let's go to a new town, a new place. Let's just start over. I feel so good. And immediately a Holy Spirit conviction said, I didn't just light you up. I didn't just light you up to put you out with a whole bunch of other good, good people. 
I lit you up so that I can show people that I am for real, that I can turn you around. So you're going to stay put and you're going to do what I tell you to do. I'm still here. <laughs> so, and worship. Okay, so how do we get, how do we show gratitude? We worship wholeheartedly. We give it our all. And Psalms 9.1 in the ESV, it says, I will give thanks to the Lord with, all, with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. See, you guys, worship is a lifestyle. I don't want you to think, oh, I, I just did the worshiping for the week. Oh, I come two times a week. I did my worship to God. I need you to understand, that's not what God's requiring. Our worship doesn't stop when we hit those exit doors. Our worship didn't stop when you sat down. And I'm going to talk to you about four ways really quickly. Four ways that we can worship God. One is we can sing and we can shout and we can dance, right? Give him a shout real quick. Wake up. Shout, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That was pretty easy. And if you thought that one was easy, that one was hard, then you really ain't going to like these ones. Acts of service. We can worship God with acts of service. Kindness, generosity shown to, shown to those in need. I'm not going to read the scripture, but you go for note takers in Hebrews 16, 13. The third way is we can tie, the way that we can worship is through our tithes and our offerings. And our giving. Not just our finances, but in our time. We wake up and give the best, the best part of our day, the first part of our day to the Lord. Number four, witnessing. Telling others how good he is. And you can look into Isaiah 12, 4. Witnessing. Making sure that we are telling everybody what he has done for us. Understand, there's more, you guys. There's a whole lot more, but I want to touch on those four. We worship in him in our conversations. How we react with one another, right? Our work effort. Are we working wholeheartedly? Are we coming in and just like, okay, the boss ain't looking? Understand the boss is looking. The boss is looking. Now, I'm going to touch into this really quick before we, we end here. As believers, we should all be living a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Not because we have to, but because we are grateful for what he has already given us. We have a saying in Pomona, we say this, we call, I don't have to, I get to, right? I get to serve the Lord. I get to wholeheartedly worship him. I get to serve to all hours of the night. I get to, right? So this is my last point. So how thankful are you? How thankful are you? Are you that Pharisee? Are you that Pharisee that you're thankful Jesus showed up to your house? You said, hey, welcome, Jesus, come in. Or were you that lady? Were you that lady who came in and just wept, just wept, began to kiss his feet, began to wipe her tears with her hair off of his feet? Never said when she stopped. I believe he was still having this conversation while she was still doing it. How thankful are you? Are you thankful enough to open your mouth and share the good news? This is a question for you to ask yourself. Man, do I even talk about Jesus? Do I even tell anybody what he's done in my life? What he's done for me? Is it enough to help somebody in need? To get out of your comfort zone? Maybe you're even going through it. But are you thankful enough to help somebody. Are you thankful enough? Does it compel you to change some bad habits? Are you thankful enough? Are you saying, yeah, you know what? I'm really thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful for you on that cross, Lord. But man, I just need, I just smoke. That's, I just, I don't even know if they smoke like that anymore. I don't know. They got all different ways they do that stuff now. Right? I just eat edibles. 
I just hit the pipe a little bit. I just watch porn a little bit. I just cheat a little bit. I just flirt at work a little bit. How thankful are you? That don't sound very thankful to me. God's looking. God's watching. How you act outside these walls is still worship, guys. Is it enough to get you out of your comfort zone and sing, shout, dance, and jump around in front of a bunch of strangers? How thankful are you? Is it enough to stop working God into your schedule and start working your schedule around God? Ah, oh, Lord, I'm tired right now. You know I'm tired. You know I worked hard. He's saying, yes, but I just want to talk to you. Lord, hold up. I'll get you 3 o'clock next Tuesday, okay? Maybe even after service. Not during service. After service, I'll give it to you. Because right now I'm too busy texting people. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just playing. Somebody's like, oh, no, my phone. He saw me. My glasses are good. They're not that good. So are you thankful enough to trust him, to praise him in all circumstances? Are you able, do you trust, and are you thankful enough to just say, thank you, Lord. I may have taken a loss this season, maybe the last five seasons, but Lord, you're still good. I still thank you. I still worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my salvation. If I don't have anything else, I have you. Thank you, Lord. You've never given up on me. Thank you, Lord. Are you thankful enough to lose your life? Church, this is where we're going. I'm not scaring nobody today. What I'm saying is this is where we're headed. You can look on any news. You can look at all this stuff. The church will be persecuted. As Christians, as believers, I heard somebody say, let's do it. Let's go. I've been reading about it. Let's go. I'm, I'm ready. I was so ready to go to jail. I was so ready to put myself in, in harm's way, give up my life for some nonsense. Now, oh, Lord, you better not put me in prison. We're coming out. There's a revival. There's a revival going to start in those places. Are you thankful enough to lose your life? Jesus said this, Matthew 10, 39, the last scripture. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. We need a church. He's coming back for a church that is giving their lives. And said, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm done with this life. I'm done with this world. There's absolutely nothing for me. Come home. Come on, Jesus. Bring it. What you got? The greatest act of gratitude. My last statement. The greatest act of gratitude that we could ever do is give our lives to Christ. He gave his life for us. Not only did he give it for us, he went through some brutal punishment. When I see those, when I see those pictures, when I see that, I have to go back every once in a while. I have to see it. It keeps me right. It keeps me humble. Man, Lord, I couldn't do that. He is worthy. He is worthy of every single praise that we have. There is not enough in me that can express my gratitude. My lungs are not capable of that. I try to shout over here. My voice starts cracking. I'm like, Lord, I want to give you more. Lord, I want to give you more. The time, I spent so much time just, just in the word, just figure, just coming up and wanting to hear from him. Said, Lord, I don't want this to be about me. Lord, you speak. You speak. I don't have enough time on earth to show him how grateful I am for my, the reconciliation with my wife, for my children, for the things, for the breath in my lungs. I don't have enough in me to express it. The greatest thing that I can do is say, I'm here, Lord. Whatever you want. Whatever you want, it's yours. 
What you need to take out of me, take out of me. I don't want it. I want you. Today, you guys, there should be no reason. There should be no reason why you would leave these doors without understanding and knowing this God that absolutely loves you. For those of you that don't know him and you're like, man, this dude's up here crazy. He's yelling. He's pacing back and forth. Crazy, man. I want you to understand something. I'm grateful. Maybe there's somebody here today and you're struggling. Maybe you're there and you're like, man, you know what? I, I've got this burden on my heart for my children. I know we are talking about the generational curses. This is a real thing. My kids are acting a fool. If they were to die today, I don't know where they would go. It doesn't have to stay that way. Maybe you don't know Christ yourself. You should not leave these doors. And, I, and I'm making an urge, and I am urging you to just find out what we're talking about. There was a day that there was an altar call for me eight and a half years ago at our Sierra Way campus in the tent. Some of you guys know where the tent is. It was raining and there's waters going across electrical cord. I thought that was it. <laughs> there was a call that was made. I was addicted. I was an alcoholic. I was violent to the extreme, manipulative, liar, greedy, selfish, beyond all. I couldn't even control it. Lustful, all of these things. And then there was a day that I was asked to come to the altar. felt like I had weight cinder blocks on my legs. I had this thing called pride in me. Man, what are people going to say? How am I going to look? I'm going to look weak. I'll tell you right now, today, the bravest, strongest thing that any man or woman could do is give their life to Jesus Christ. My life has never been the same. My life has never been the same. Everything that the enemy took from me, God restored it plus. And this is just the beginning, guys. But today, today, this is the call. I have everybody go ahead, stand up. I want right now, I want every single, every single one of our leaders, every single one of our, our, our team here, I call it my team, our family here, the Wayward Outreach, I want you to start praying for the person right next to you. There's somebody today, we're seeing people, they're going on into eternity and we don't know where they're going. But today we are praying right now for strength. You're going to pray for the person next to you, for strength, for courage, for boldness, to step up, to step up and say, you know what? I want some of what they got. I don't know what this shouting and screaming and jumping around is about, but I want some of that. Right now, just go ahead, touch the person next to you. Touch the person next to you. Reach your hand out to them. Begin to pray for them right now, to the right or to the left. We're praying salvation in this place. We're praying for a transformed heart. We're praying for the hardness of hearts to be softened right now. Generational curses will go in the name of Jesus. Today will be a new day. You walk out this door, you will never be the same. We are believing for this. Pray for them, you guys. Pray for them. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. So I'm going to make a call right now. For those of you, and I'm going to count to three. For those of you that say, you know what? I haven't been grateful. I haven't been thankful. I know that the only reason I'm alive today is because there must be a God. I've taken shots to the head and I'm still here. There has to be something. I've taken pills and I've almost died. I've od like what well, it must be. There must be a God if I am still here. If that's you today, if that's you today and you've just, you've, you've neglected your family, your wife, your children, your husbands, Maybe that's you. I invite you to come up. We're not here to embarrass you. We're not here to put you on blast. We're here to love you, to pray for you, 
to see you transform. That's what they're here for. The greatest sense of gratitude. If that's you today and you know, man, I shouldn't have been here. I should be in a prison cell for the rest of my life. I should have been dead, strung out on the streets. I should have been divorced, but you're still here. I invite you to come up, you guys. Let's begin to give credit where credit is due. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Yes, bring them, bring them, bring them. Come, you guys. Come, you guys. Ask the person next to you. Ask the person next to you that you were praying for. Do you know Jesus? Do you know God? Ask them. If not, bring them up. Bring them up. Come up with them. It's time. We don't have time to waste, you guys. There's no time to waste. You've been so, so good to me. Proud of you, brother. Proud of you. If there's anybody out there that says, you know what, I knew God. I knew God, but man, I haven't been grateful. I've been stepping all over everything that he's given to me. We pray right now that you would come up, that you rededicate your life. Say, you know what, I'm going to make this turn around now. There's no time to waste. Also, is there anybody out there? Maybe you have a family member, son, daughter, brother, sister, that you don't know where they're going. If they were to die today, you don't know where they're going. Is there anybody out there? I got some crazy family members, guys. If they die today, I don't know where they're going. If that's you today, we pray and we urge you to come and stand in the gap for them today. I was prayed for. That's why I'm up here. I was prayed for. A turnaround can happen in your household today. I'm going to count to three, you guys. And anybody who's up here, every single person that's up here, every single person that can hear my voice, that's right. Praise God. Praise God. Welcome. Come, you guys. Come. It's not too late. Come, you guys. Come, 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 come. Man, come, 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 man. Praise God. Praise God. All we're doing today, you guys, is we're giving God reverence. That, Lord, I acknowledge the goodness that you have given me. I acknowledge what you have done in my life. We're proud of you, bro. We're proud of you. I acknowledge you. That's all we're doing. And we're saying thank you, Lord. Let's practice saying that word. Maybe some of us haven't said it before. Thank you, Lord. One more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're praying right now that the Holy Spirit will touch each and every one of you in a mighty way today. Today is the day of turnaround. Today is the day of change. For those of you that came up here with something, leave it right there. Don't go home with it. Will it take work? Yes. Will it? It will take work. Will it be a little struggle? Yes. But you've been struggling your whole life. Begin to praise God. Thank you. Amen. So right now, you guys, we're going to go ahead and pray. And we're just going to say a prayer. Just repeat it after me. And after this prayer, it's a sinner's prayer. And after this prayer, Scripture tells us, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you will be saved done not running around this church 20 times not feeding not being a perfect person and feeding a bunch of, of, of homeless people or doing these good acts none of that gets you saved it's believing and confessing that Jesus is Lord giving your life to him he gave his for you so right now you guys with every with every uh, uh, head bowed every eye closed just repeat this prayer father forgive me I've neglected you. I've pushed you away. I've been disobedient. 
I ask right now for your forgiveness. I repent. I return. I turn from my sin. And I turn to you, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. Thank you, God, for creating me. Today will be a day of change. Today, I will never be the same. When I leave this place, people will look at me and begin to say, what is different? I will glorify you, Lord.